three areas that we look at in the discovery transactions and exchange. First of all is peer-to-peer -peer exchanges. That's where you have two NFC phones talking to each other. It could be a simple meeting where you want to transfer a business card or a contact card. So you present your phone to the other person's NFC phone and that will transact and that data will transfer across to his Outlook list or contact list in the phone. It could be phone to a reader, peer to peer. So we're talking about reader to reader applications. It could be a phone to a TV set. It could be a phone to a, um, another device where you want to have a pairing exchange, where you want to connect your phone or transfer information from one device to the other. That's what we call peer-to-peer. -peer. The discovery side of NFC is what we see happening more and more now. It's, it's, it's the easier one to deploy here and now. And that's really tying into the social media networks. Who checks in here when they go places? Who uses Facebook or uh, Foursquare and checks in? at a shop or a location, just to let your friends know where you are. Um, and it can get quite exciting, it can be quite competitive. From a social media perspective, we're seeing NFC used more and more on a global basis. Applications in social media are taking place globally, whether it's in Africa, whether it's in Australia, whether it's in the United States or Europe. We're seeing social media applications really ride on the back of NFC and enhance their whole functionality. The third is the transactional side. We're seeing speed and convenience, ease of use and multitasking in financial transactions happening through NFC. So basically using the phone as a payment medium. Let's demystify NFC. So first of all, we have the tag element. And that's what one of the things that our company does is we make tags, a lot of tags, a lot of NFC tags. And if I reach into my deep pockets, you might recognize some of the names that we see with tags. So Nokia is one of the, the quiet achievers in NFC. They are really a champion of NFC, one of the co-founders of NFC. And such, they are one of the biggest suppliers of NFC. So in every smartphone Nokia uh, box, you will receive uh, a, a label, a tag. That tag can be read by the phone. They actually put one in their instruction manual. So the new phone owner can very quickly become accustomed to how to use their NFC phone. So in an instruction booklet, if they present the phone at the tag, it will take them to the information about their phone and they can learn it very quickly. They also use these gift cards, which drives traffic through their web store. So from the point of view of issuing a gift card, someone can go online to the Nokia store and buy applications for their phone straight away. And it's quick and easy through NFC. By just tapping the card with the phone, it takes them to the link in the web store. So there are four types of tags, basically. Those tags have basic different memory and, uh, and security functions. Types one, two, three, and four. You will hear um, names like MyFair Ultralight or Topaz, uh, Desfire used. These are uh, common chips used in the production of the tags. Type one and two, uh, a relatively simple low memory chips where you can store URL, uh, website information. And then we get up into some of the higher memory and higher security chips like Desfire used in type four applications or more payment applications requiring high, higher security. There's an example of a few uh, of the data strings that can be encoded to a tag. And they are using what's called an NDEF, N-D-E-F, or the NFC data exchange format. So when, they write a, when we write a business card information or a URL to a tag, that's being written in a standardized format. So every phone can read that format. The NFC reader 
Um, I'd just add that um, every smartphone can basically read types 1, 2, and 4 uh, in, in, in the standard um, NFC protocol. Type 3 is uh, pretty much a tag from Sony called Filica, uh, which is uh, a specialized Type 3 chip within the NFC standard. And uh, it does take a little bit more effort for, for the reader to, to work with a Type 3, but that whole standard area is evolving, and Sony are putting a lot of work into evolving the NFC standard for their chip. The NFC reader has three modes. One is reader slash writer mode. So the reader uh, will be able to just recognize the, the uh, chip and the data on that chip and transfer that to the uh, website. Um, so it will open the URL. Or the writer mode, where you're actually issuing an NFC tag or you, you want to write to the tag. You maybe want to upload a value to the tag or a coupon to the tag. That's in the writer mode. The peer-to-peer -peer mode that we've already covered and the card emulation mode. Now, the card emulation mode is basically, you know, replicating a card. So you're using a mobile phone. It might be in transportation. It might be payment. It might be in loyalty or couponing. But using your phone instead of using a card. There are some security elements that need to be changed in, in order to operate in card emulation mode, but um, they're well standardized and covered by the issuing bodies of those cards or, or NFC um, applications. Let's look at some of the exciting parts now. That's some of the, the technical stuff covered. Let's look at some of the applications. On top and in the media, we hear a lot about the, those payments, ID management, payment, and transit. NFC applications at the top of the iceberg. But all underneath the iceberg, we're seeing smart posters, e-marketing, content sharing, shopping, couponing, entertainment, social networking, mobile services, the list goes on and on. And NFC creates uh, really endless uh, imagination as to what you can do with it. But what is NFC challenging? It's challenging traditional thinking versus NFC thinking. It's just like what the, the smartphone, what the social media world is doing to us. That's the same effect NFC is having on our application world. So in the traditional thinking world, we have the the applications of payments and transit and ID management and mobile services. In the NFC world, we have smart posters, we have e-documents, we have e-menus, we have m-shopping, we have couponing, we have entertainment and we have social networking. Under the traditional thinking, the banks control the payment, the transport companies control transit. We have mobile services controlled by the telco. Now we're seeing this whole new spectrum of players come into transaction community and interactions in, into the, the whole e-commerce hub. So we're seeing merchants play a role. In it. We're seeing event coordinators such as this exhibition play a role in using NFC. We're seeing the merchants become far more involved as well in interacting with the customer through the mobile phone, through the internet, through uh, NFC technology. In the traditional thinking, we have a lot of secure elements. In NFC, we really have no secure elements. The, 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 the level of interaction is uh, really cut down. The walls are cut down significantly. It's, opening with, it's operating in open protocols that everyone understands. So what's changing? Well. There may not be any more bank cards anymore, which some of the card manufacturers might not like to hear. There may not be a transit ticket anymore because it might be on your phone. No reader or badge key in identity management because we just use our phone. We really are seeing a whole change in the way in which things are done. Even couponing. Couponing in the United States 
has traditionally been handed through the shopping docket or through promotional docket, why not do it on the phone? It's changing the whole world of couponing and could, in fact, open up couponing again in other new markets that gave away the old-fashioned system years and years ago because couponing now through NFC is really sexy and really interesting. Identive as a company, we play in all those spaces from the, the reader modules, from the readers themselves that inter integrate with the applications through to the tag um, issuance, the tag production. So some more NFC applications. If we look at Korea, what an amazing country for NFC. Have a look at YouTube and, and Google NFC Korea and you'll see some amazing applications. A whole city or a whole town basically running on NFC. Touch to go readers, so using your phone for access control. Checking product pricing in the supermarket. Movie purchasing using your phone. Read someone's life story on, on the website. NFC ticketing. Setting a device via the phone, your TV application, for example, or an NFC photo frame. One of our partners or customers in Australia are really innovating um, globally uh, and, and really using window stickers and NFC stickers, uh, enabling small businesses that really to drive the value of their customers, really enabling them to get a lot closer to their customers. That company is called Tappet. We've done some wonderful window stickers. For example, you see this one in the middle here. That's a double-sided window sticker that enables the customer to check in as they go to a shop on the window using either QR code or using the NFC tag. And that'll take them immediately to a URL so that they can check in, they can find out more information about where they are, look at their location, map their location on Google Maps really have an interaction with the retail facility they're going to. And that the analytics in the back end can therefore back that up, providing the retailer and the merchant with far greater data about their customer, far greater information, far greater interaction. In France, we see the, uh, the uh, cities deploying NFC technology. We see the metros deploying NFC technologies. And in the US, we see ISIS, which is focusing on the payment solutions, also using NFC technology to establish the uh, user behavior, They're establishing people getting to learn how to tap on and tap off on an NFC label, or in this case, a window sticker. Smart posters are really giving a far more interactive experience with advertising. So usually we see a smart poster, a poster, and we might like that product, but five minutes later we've forgotten about it. Now with NFC, we can go up to one of the smart posters. We can present our phone. It will then take us to the link. We can store that link. We can have a look at it now. We can have a look at it later. It can be done now and, and we can have far more interaction. This one on the, on the right was done in France. It's advertising a concert coming up for a popular band. The labels on the left were done by uh, Orange in the UK and Orange in France, really creating that interactive experience. A little name in the world at the moment. Um, they they uh, have a big play in NFC. Um, I'm holding one of their phones at the moment, uh, which is a, a Google phone uh, made by Samsung. Google are deploying NFC tickets uh, as part of their, their smart city program. This one was provided for them for Austin, Texas. Uh, well publicized and uh, a really high security type 4 chip, some large memory on board enabling them to to really deploy some smart stuff on, on their application. But this was used for location basing. So basically, I'm in a shop or I'm at a location, I present my tag and, and here I am. It, it's all happening then on my mobile phone and I can log into that and, and keep that on record and file. I've mentioned Nokia. Really, they are one of the biggest deployers. They've got a wonderful stand here. If you have a chance to look at their stand, look at the new uh, Windows uh, phone coming into play and uh, with NFC. 
and they're doing some wonderful applications around the world, not just on the fact of the tag in box, as I mentioned, but also some wonderful deployments. I'll mention a couple of those in a minute. And my favorite, okay? So this is, uh, this is my favorite, it's a fridge magnet. So if anyone wants to see a fridge magnet, I have a fridge magnet. And could you imagine getting a fridge magnet from the local takeaway shop? But how many people keep, uh, keep the menus in their cupboards or keep the, the numbers on file uh, or the plumber or the electrician, whoever that may be, and presenting your smartphone and it automatically dials into that, uh, into that uh, service provider. So fridge magnets are very important. <laughs> But fridge magnets uh, and NFC at all, uh, if we're talking about operating in a metal environment, uh, we need to realize that there are special tags that work in a metal environment uh, that will enable the RF to work uh, on a metal substrate, uh, which we provide as well. So we're seeing larger deployments of all these unique tags around the world. Payment. When we talk about a metal environment, well, phone tags are, phones are metal. They have a large degree of metal in them. If you just take a plain NFC sticker and work on the phone, it probably won't work at all, or it won't work very well. So to establish the, uh, the phone sticker, we, we make a special sticker that will go onto a phone. Now, the phone sticker can be used in a couple of ways. It can be used to bridge the technology. So until the time that all the phones out there are NFC, you can issue tags that become a unique identifier for that person. And they can feed into your network and they can play a role in identification. They can play a role in couponing, in, in, uh, in loyalty, um, in, in ID. So we need to make special tags for that. This is a new tag called TomPay, which we deploy in a card with, uh, we work with the card manufacturers, we supply them with the RFID inlaid on a substrate that enables it to work in a metal environment. They laminate that into the card. That can work within the card factory's standard printing and personalization processes. And it comes in a little pop-out area like that. So when the, when the, uh, when the, the bank or when the, the card company distributes the card and the letter in the envelope to the, the end user, they can simply pop it out and place it on the back of their phone. And we're seeing a large adoption of those, uh, of those types of products on a global basis. Uh, I think uh, probably the most highly publicized recently was the Barclay card in the UK, uh, which was publicized. Business cards, key fobs, beer coasters, wrist straps, bottle labels, billboards, interactive toys and games, the list of NFC enabled devices and labels that are going on to these products or inlays that are going into those products are endless. Back to Tappet, they're really deploying some applications that are, are driving the whole retail experience, whether it's for McDonald's, whether it's for the local hardware shop, the movie cinema, the automotive manufacturer or retailer, the local supermarket. We're seeing a lot of these applications deployed. This application here was the recent, uh, recent uh, HTC One deployment or release uh, down under. It, it, it looked at basically issuing a wrist strap, M NFC wrist strap uh, to the user and involving them in the whole NFC experience uh, for the launch. So we're, we're seeing NFC taken into a whole new field, such as exhibitions like this. Could you imagine walking up to one of these exhibitors and just presenting your phone, they've captured your details, they write the information, they automatically have your record. And if you want quotes or information, you can, they can follow it up far more easier. This is a wonderful application where we're tying in NFC, smartphone technologies, and location-based activities in Singapore. So basically, the activity is taking place all around the country, and we're getting a really a, a good understanding of usage, uh, demographics uh, in the country through the use of the smartphones and the NFC interaction. 
So whether that's uh, a taxi company or whether that's uh, a retailer or, or whatever that the may be, there's an application there. And certainly this sort of demographic data is showing some of the back-end analytics that can be based around NFC technology. Don't know if anyone's seen Skylanders. It's one of the most popularized or, or publicized uh, applications uh, for NFC technology. Basically, uh, if you're not familiar with it, uh, all these little characters are characters in the game. And they are all NFC tagged. And they can be placed on an NFC reader and brought into the game. So uh, your child uh, may want a, a new NFC player in the game and, and, and go and grab it. They can take it out of the packaging and introduce it to the game. Very large deployment, very successful product using NFC. Now, I mentioned uh, Nokia before. They have, a, have uh, really had an award-winning application that was uh, deployed in Abu Dhabi. Uh, sorry, in uh, Dubai. Go and have a look at the Nokia stand. Look at what they did with free popcorn in movie theaters based on purchasing one of the uh, new N9 uh, with NFC phones uh, recently. So basically, if you purchased a, a N9 phone, you could take it to the local movie theater and get a free ticket by presenting the phone or free popcorn as well. What a great promotion. NFC is everywhere. We have uh, probably the, the only advertisement uh, is uh, if you want to buy NFC products or find out more, we have uh, www.identivenfc.com. You can go to that site and learn more about NFC. You can buy products on label, including print your own labels. So if you want your own label or photo uh, or design on an NFC tag for your shop or for your application or for your customer, then you can do it online here and they'll be printed, encoded and sent to you. So that's really all from me and, and our company, Identiv. Uh, thank you very much. Are there any questions at all with regards to NFC? No? Feel free to take a brochure. And if there are, we have a stand over here. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate. Thank you very much.